ready. Hi guys, welcome to What The Flow. I'm Sofia Silva and I'm really excited for our guest today, Christy Parker. She is the author of Sheality and the founder of Emotional Ethics and she's an expert in managing and controlling toxic relationships. So, if you've ever had any uh, pushy or controlling people in your life, this is for you. Ready. Sophia Silva is a positive psychology coach who shares with her audiences the knowledge of leading figures to provide a roadmap for people who are interested in leading a life worth living. This is What the Flow with Sophia Silva. And it's probably for all of us because I'm sure we're all going to run into this at some point in our lives. Yes. So, welcome, Christy. Hello. So aren't a lot of toxic people manipulative? Yes. So I would say sometimes around those people, their manipulation is to the extent that makes you feel like you're the crazy one. Yes, they do. They put <laughs> you in a maze and it's like you, they just make you Somehow run around. Somehow their bad behavior ends up being your fault. Yes, it's called gaslighting. Gaslighting. So if you want to look that up, What's that? I don't need to really go into it too much, but um, it's basically where they, they're using half-truths, they're using uh, lies, they're, saying, they're refusing to um, agree with what you're intuiting about them, yeah. you know, um, or what you're feeling around them, and they try to deceive you in some way to not believe that. So how can we work with those people or set up those boundaries? Think of um, three circles, uh -huh. okay? And one is time, and one is, um, you know, the person, and one is uh, what you're gonna do with them or say to them. And you get to decide how closely those rings go in or out. Okay. okay, so basically you're deciding how much time you're spending with them and how much you're going to tell them and what you're going to tell them or if you're going to go to their house or if they have to come to your house um, because sometimes people are to more toxic in certain situations and places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what about for the person that might be afraid to set these boundaries? That's usually people pleasers mm -hmm. and people who are emotionally intelligent and they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, even somebody's feelings who has, you know, of somebody who's hurt them. They don't want to feel the uncomfortableness of setting those boundaries. It's interesting that you just said emotionally intelligent. I never really saw it that way. So people that are more emotionally intelligent actually tend to be more socially more acceptable, diplomatic, kind huh. and considerate. They understand that it's easier to work with people and collaborate and get things done uh, if you are nice to them. Yeah, but that could be detrimental. Yeah, if you put the two together, yeah. then you've got somebody who doesn't know how to set boundaries. They feel, uh, they, they also don't want to feel uncomfortable. And I'd say that they need to learn to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They need to, just as much as the toxic person has a problem, the people, pers the people pleaser has a problem with being able to say no mm -hmm. or disagree with people or yeah. go do something without that person and deal with the consequences of that person not being happy. Um, that person not being happy is not correct. You should be able to say no, disagree, and do things on your own without somebody trying to control you and manipulate you. Yeah. Do you know why? Uh, what I, I'm trying to think about like people pleasers, why they would feel <clears throat> sad if someone's mad at them or, or so upset with it to the point that they'll let someone take advantage of them? A lot of times it's a personality trait. Mm -hmm. There are certain personalities that, you know, they're just born that way to be nice and kind and want to get along with everybody. They want everybody to like them. Yeah. Okay. And they, they need to learn that that just is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and to learn that other people need to learn to respect them. Yeah. That's, that's what it comes down to is respect. Yes. I think so. And respect for yourself. Right. So what about the, the, the aggressor in this case, the toxic person? Is it bad for them to behave that way towards other people? Okay, uh, let me first talk about how it affects the individual who's the victim. Okay. Because okay? it becomes uh, physical and yes. biological I'm damage. I'm glad that you're going there. Yeah, because a lot of people, they're like, well, you know, just suck it up, get over it, yeah. you know, or whatever. And uh, Robert Sapolsky is a, a neuroendocrinologist who uh, did years and years of research and tied together how uh, people being treated consistently negatively, mm -hmm. uh, how that does damage to the brain and then does damage to your internal organs and causes disease and illness. Yeah. And then he also went on to talk about how the person who is continually in a rage, continually you know, uh, in this toxic um, place is also getting harmed. Yeah. Uh, physically, but in different ways. 
So the person who um, is the victim, let's say this is somebody who, you know, they're, they're going through this <clears throat> consistently. It has to be consistent, uh, toxic um, environment. And they have a pretty healthy way of being able to go talk to other people about it and kind of express it in some way, cry about it, get over it, you know, yeah. in private or something. And maybe they're getting counseling, whatever. Um, those people can, are still harmed in some way because what happens is your glutacor, gluteo, <laughs> gluteo, <laughs> sorry, glucocorticoid levels go That's through the roof. That's a difficult word. Yeah. <laughs> they go through the roof. And what happens is part of your uh, brain starts to shrink. Um, parts of your brain stop uh, telling your immune system to function. So even if you have a way to release that, just the fact that it's happening is still harmful for you. Right, when you feel the anxiety and you feel like yeah. that fight or oh, flight, yeah. that's the glucocorticoid levels yeah. going up and it starts shutting down the calming parts of your body, the, the, the parts, uh, the neurochemicals within your brain that help you to be happy and to sleep well and, and your fat levels go up and you start, yeah. uh, your immune system goes down. You just fall apart. Yeah, and you start <laughs> so, getting sick. And yeah. so that's why it's bad for businesses, they've yeah. found. They've discovered that they don't wanna hire toxic people or raise them through the ranks because yeah. they start making employees sick, especially if they're humiliated in public. Right, your ego. You know, you go into your office and you, you're, you're actually, you know, trying to heal instead of working. Yeah. And you're also ruminating. The ruminating thing is a really big problem with this. Can you talk about that Because one? even when they're not in the room, mm -hmm. they're in the room. They're there yeah. in your brain. And they're like hovering <laughs> over. Yes. Like, I'm watching you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm serious. That's what it it's is. like. It is. Yeah. And, no, and what they've said is going through your head a lot. Um, and so, again, the glucocorticoid levels are going through the roof when they're not even there. And it's yeah. making you sick even when you're there. So I try to tell people, you need to go find something to do that makes you happy. Yeah. Because then you're going to put the dopamine back in and all the happy drugs that your, your body naturally makes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And serotonin. And you're going to sleep better and you're going to be happier. If you... Even, you know, it could be spiritual where you get the chills. It could be, you know, watching your favorite movies or favorite songs um, that just, that give you that feel good, peaceful feeling. You're actually healing from what has happened to you. Mm -hmm. I would say if you need to ruminate on it in order to solve a problem, do that. But once it just becomes this bitterness, yeah, you need to stop yeah. and you need to find some other outlet because I've watched it destroy people's lives yeah. when they've ruminated for years and years and years. Um, what happens uh, to the toxic person is they start uh, having heart disease and other ailments that have to do with, you know, stroke and things with too much stress and getting upset all the time. Yeah. But um, one of the really big factors with being the victim is bipolar disorder comes out of it. Depression. Really? Depression, yes. It shrinks the brain and in the inside of the brain, uh, pituitary gland and other parts of the brain, um, start shrinking as well and it affects uh, you mentally and emotionally so you can if, you, if you're consistently in this problem you'll start having mental and emotional disorders yeah so what about for the toxic person how can <clears throat> someone identify that they are a toxic person well uh, they can watch my video <laughs> I'm on my website at emotionalethics.com uh, the first studio cast is free, and it's an hour and a half because I just want to get that information out there. Mm -hmm. uh, most people who go through this part um, of the lecture uh, will decide whether or not they are a consistently toxic person or if they're a victim. And I've had people in my lectures just raise their hand and go, I, I'm having trouble with being toxic with my child or with this person or yeah. just in general, and I need to stop. I feel like that's so difficult to do because it's such a, it's almost like a power struggle. And to stop being toxic? Yeah. Or, yeah. You, yeah. It is. They have to, it's a habit. It's yeah, become a habit for habit, a lot yeah. of them. For other ones, it's become a way of life. It's mm -hmm. a pathological disorder. It's become really? borderline disorder. Uh, they're nar very narcissistic. Mm -hmm. uh, it can become sociopath um, and antisocial personality disorder. The people that are in jail. Okay, if, if the, oppositional, that's like the extreme level. right, it starts with oppositional defiant disorder or, you know, bipolar disorder. And if they aren't you know, given boundaries uh, and consequences for their behavior at, when they're young, it just becomes more of a habit and it can become a personality disorder. This program is brought to you by...
to Anaheim Stoneworks, the company that has taken all the obstacles out of your way. From start to finish, Anaheim Stoneworks takes care of each and every step to give your home the unique look that you've been dreaming of. Anaheim Stoneworks. Quality from start to finish. Master Toddy LA Training Center offers authentic Muay Thai training with locations in Bangkok, Pomona, and Anaheim. For more information, visit MasterToddyLA.com. So what can you do if you choose to stay in that toxic relationship? Mm, good question. Um, so there are certain steps that you can take. Again, on the, the free video on my website, it, it goes more de in detail. There's, you know, PowerPoint um, pictures for you to look at to have the details. But um, basically, um, if, if it's like a group and you're kind of like around, you know, some of the people are saying things that you don't like and, you know, or it's in an office or something like that. And, you know, a lot of times people will just pick up on the fact that they're saying something inappropriate if you sit back and you just kind of mm. stop okay, yeah. interacting. And uh, those are people that are a little bit more, you know, able to pick up on that mm -hmm. and, and go, okay, what just happened? Why are they not talking? Why are they, you know, what's wrong? Um, that can work in a lot of cases. But if you're dealing with a belligerent person who's consistently in your face, always on your case, constantly coming up with negative things, they don't come in and say hello to you. They, they come in with a list. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're list makers. Yeah, like you don't exist. Right. You are an object to mm -hmm. get these lists done. Yeah. Okay. That's a narcissist, basically, and a control freak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you um, if it's somebody who's belligerent and in your face, you need to start acting like a police officer or a parent with this person. Okay. You're, you're basically reparenting like? this person and you're giving commands. <laughs> It's Your true. parents didn't do a good job, so <laughs> I'm going to. That's exactly right. That's what the jail system's trying to do, right? <laughs> so um, you need to give commands. That means no please. There is no please in there. Police officers do not say please for a reason, okay? Because it puts them underneath the narcissist. When you say please stop doing that, you're begging. They see that as begging, okay? This is interesting. Yeah. So you have to just give a command. Do not talk to me that way. And a lot of times they'll start using, well, you did this and you did that. Oh, yeah, and they'll, the manipulation. You know, okay, and blame and all these things and lies and things you've never even heard of to just kind of, you know, it's like a fog rolling in. It's yeah. crazy. Making. What, me? I didn't, what are you talking about? Right, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll actually tell you that you did things that they actually did. It's, it's crazy making. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> not funny, but it's just funny I know, to me it sometimes. Is. It is. Because if you're watching it, you're like, wow. You know, but if you're yeah. in the middle of it, you get sucked into that, especially if you're a people pleaser and, and you're not used to knowing how to deal with this. Yeah. Okay. So you have to give a command that talks about the tone, not the argument. Mm. Stop defending yourself. Stop trying to prove that you're right. Just say, stop talking down to me. Yeah. I won't talk to you until you can talk to me respectfully. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it might take them time. You, it, you have to use the, a school skill called broken record. Okay. You just repeat it over and over again. If you have to walk away, then do so. Okay. Right? If they start following you, then that's a problem. You call the cops. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're not letting you leave. Yeah. yeah. That's scary. That's, that's scary. That's not but it, that it happens. Yeah. Right? So this person needs to learn the first boundary, yeah. okay, of, you know, not going to talk to you unless you can talk to me respectfully. Do not talk down to me. Yeah. Okay. And it's and it's not being harsh back. Okay. It's being firm. Yeah. Okay? And we can't blame them either, right? Because they're just going to start <laughs> no. getting even deeper into right whatever it is going on. Right. No. Don't That's blame them. not going to work. Yeah. They're masters of disguise yes. with that. Um, the next step, if you've got somebody who is now, you know, not being belligerent, um, but still kind of being, you know, stinky. You know, mm -hmm. um, you want to use the next one, which is requests. You want to request that they treat you a certain way. The other one was don't do this. This is please talk to me respectfully. Okay. Okay. And please do this. Please do that. And in fact, you can actually blend the two. I had a friend who um, had a brother who was calling her up just, you know, they're adults and he's calling her up, telling her what to do. And she's like, you know, she learned this skill. She just said, you know what, can you, can you do something for me? 
And he's like, okay, what, what, what? <laughs> can, you, can you please stop talking down to me? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. You know, That's sometimes good. people just need to, they need a mirror held up. Yes, they might not notice they're them, doing it. Right, exactly yeah. what they're doing. Uh, the next step to do, if this is somebody who's ready for introspection, it takes a long time for somebody who's belligerent and toxic to get mm -hmm. there. But if you pick the right moment and they kind of like start being a little aggressive, why are you doing that? Yeah. Why, why are you being mean? Why are you overreacting mm -hmm. to this small thing? And they don't even have to answer it. Just let them, let Be it aware. sit in there with a question. Yeah. Because they need to learn to introspect. Yeah. And figure out why they're overreacting. Yeah. To this. Yeah. And if they say, well, because you, then they're not ready. <laughs> yeah. No, you're <laughs> overreacting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and often they'll do that. You'll be completely calm and they will project their inner anger or frustration Anxiety. at being questioned mm -hmm. onto you. Mm -hmm. Well, you're the one who's really angry. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm actually quite calm. Yep. You know? You have to mirror yeah. that and, and be an example of it. And it takes a long time to get them to that place. And it okay. has to be consistent. You have to be willing to do this. Yeah. If you have a child, you're going to have to do this. This is part of dealing with an oppositional defiant disorder child or mm. somebody who's just aggressive. Yeah. You're, you're going to have to. But um, if, if, you're a, if you're in the beginning stages of a relationship or a friendship or something with a, a company or a boss, you have to set those boundaries immediately. Yeah. I, okay. yeah, I agree. Because once they get away with doing something like gaslighting um, or uh, manipulating you in some way or using some type of, you know, aggressive voice to get you to, to cooperate, they're going to use it. They know, oh, I got it. I know exactly what to use now. Yeah, it becomes they're just like a pattern it. of, I don't even think they do it consciously. Some it's do. Just, okay. The, path, some do. the pathological ones Those do. Ones, yeah. But yes, yeah, some of them don't. It's just, they just... They use what they know is going to work. It works, yeah, which right? is what we all do, really. Right. Just different things work for different people. Right. So what about your book, Sheality? What can we learn from that? Okay, Sheality is, uh, it's mostly, I, I mostly had it done for women. Okay. Uh, but men want it too. So <laughs> men and women are both ordering it. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's an illustrated book. It's only 60 pages. Uh, there's three stories. The first story is basically for the victim. Um, it's helping them to understand um, that they've gone through something to learn compassion, okay? okay? That we all go through difficulties to learn compassion. It's also telling the toxic person, you've gone through a difficulty to learn compassion, not to learn to do this difficult, harsh thing that you've experienced to other people, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so it's, it's teaching you compassion. And then the next story is about, okay, this happened to you. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. Let's learn to set boundaries. And it talks about um, how to set those boundaries with people. And the third story is about who to trust and who not to trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we trust people and put expectations on them and we get disappointed and maybe we need to own that that was our expectation and it's not fair to put that on them yeah in some cases no all very useful well thank you so much i think okay. we can learn a lot from you i love i love the steps that you outlined for people okay. to take Good. yeah that's perfect so thank you so much for coming on the show thanks for having me yeah Great. if you like the show please subscribe to my channel sophia silva and follow me on instagram or hit like on my facebook page and thank you for watching Conversation and information exchange during participation in the sofiasilva.org website, Sofia Silva YouTube channel, or interaction with and all social media sites is intended for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be considered a professional diagnosis or treatment. Do not confuse this information with treatment or medical advice or directions per se. Nothing posted on this site supplements or supersedes the direction of your medical caretakers. Sophia Silva, MA, does not provide the information on these pages to substitute for individualized therapy. No claim to cure.
cure, treat, diagnose, or otherwise provide mental or behavioral health care is guaranteed, promised, or implied by this site. The same applies to any professionals who might appear on this site. This website contains links to other websites and resources. We take no responsibility for the content of other resources, electronic or written. If you're in need of any health services, please contact a licensed professional or call 911.